Hey, Brick Baron's back, man. Had a viewer, well, a few viewers over the uh, last few months asked me about Lepin and what I thought about its impact on Lego investing. So I thought I'd do a quick video to share my thoughts on it. And my number one thought with Lepin is they're scumbags who are basically parasites who are, who are hurting the very brand that we all love, which is Lego. How do they do this? Well, as you guys mostly know, Lepin is based in China. They do not respect international copyrights, and they're basically stealing you know, not only the designs and the actual bricks from Lego and making them much cheaper um, and, 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 quite frankly, uh, not very well. Uh, they're also stealing the intellectual properties like The Simpsons that and Star Wars and Marvel superheroes that Lego paid for. Lepin never paid for that. Okay, they're getting a free ride, and it's not fair. The Lepin sets themselves, though cheap, um, and alternative for some people, are honestly not very, there's not much thought put into quality control, not much in the engineering or design. Um, matter of fact, I did get my hands on a Lepin set second hand not too, not too long ago. It was like a 100 piece set, I put it together, and about three or four of the bricks had no clutch power. So if that holds true, that ratio, you're talking about three or four percent of the bricks you buy in a set had no clutch power. And that is unacceptable to me. Because you know what, the Galaxy Explorer 1978, um, I have it sitting on that shelf over there, I'll have to do a video on it pr pretty soon, but um, this set, even today, what, 40 years later, this thing still, still, you can actually put this thing together, the bricks all stick, the bricks all work, there's no warping, there's no nothing, it's quality, and that's what Lego gives you. Yes, I understand you're paying a little bit more for Lego, but you're buying a quality product, and we don't see a lot of quality products being made anymore. Um, internationally or, or in the United States anymore. I'm, I'm happy we have a quality product. I'm willing to pay 10, 20 percent or more for it. Just my thoughts on that. The bottom line is, you know, last time I checked, um, you know, when I watched the Ten Commandments of Charlton Heston coming down off, off Mount Sinai there, uh, he said, hey, one of the commandments was thou shalt not steal, right? And even if you're not a religious person, I think we can all agree that's a really great thing we should all strive to live by. You know, stealing is not a good thing. And Lepin's stealing. And they, I hope they're held accountable. I really do. Lepin has tried to present themselves as a legit company. They now have a website. Um, this is their contact page I pulled from it. And it looks like they do have a person, Zheng Chao something. And it looks like he's got a phone number there. And um, so maybe you guys should... Give them a call. Tell them, hey, you know what? We don't appreciate you. I love this down at the bottom. It's for the affordable and admirable. Really? Cheers. Oh, okay. Yeah, you guys are just so, you're so on the up and up. Give me a break. What a bunch of scumbags. So, now, as as, as harsh as I am on Lepin, um, I want to be clear about one thing. Uh, some people out there are not in an economic position to even afford Lego. Lepin might be their only alternative. People who sadly might have gotten affected by the hurricanes or a natural disaster. It, it does happen. And in that case, you know, the holidays rolling around. If you're someone who, who recently has been displaced by a natural disaster, I understand. You know, buy the Lepin. Make your child happy. Um, I don't think any of us will fault you for that. Also, if you lost your job um, and maybe the factory closed down or got, your job got outsourced and you're just scraping by trying to get something for your kid, you know, I'm not going to judge you for that, man. Buy the left and set up. That's all you can afford. Um, you know, it's just temporary. And if it makes a child happy for a few days to get an escape from, from a very difficult existence, then I'm all for it, man. I'm not going to judge anybody too harshly on that. So getting back to the whole Lepin thing as far as um, the investing world goes for the secondary market, Lepin does have an impact. There's no question about that. It, it does have some impact. We'll never know how deep the impact is. We don't have any real hard data to look at Lepin numbers or sales and stuff like that. Um, but I also say too, to kind of, I've said this before in other videos um, over the years, that um, a lot of folks who buy Lepin uh, weren't going to buy Lego anyways um, for a variety of reasons. So... Um, I don't think Lepin is going to be the reason that Lego would ever go under. Um, but Lepin needs to be shut down. I and mean, the best way to shut that down is if you can afford Lego, buy the Lego. Yeah, I know Lego might be uh, 20, 30% more, 40% more than Lepin. Uh, but to me, to get that quality product that I know is going to work year in, year out, those bricks work no matter what set I buy, I can mix and match them. I'm happy with that. And I'm also supporting a company that is is creating and giving me new products and high quality products. And that's how I look at it. So those are my thoughts on Lepin. Um, 
you can agree or disagree with me want, you know, hey, it's your prerogative, man. I'm not here to argue with you. What I'm here to tell you is that it does have a negative impact on Lego. It does hurt the secondary market. Um, we don't know how big because we'll never know Lego or Leppin specifics, but um, that's why I don't buy Leppin. So that is Brick Bearing Man signing off, and thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Bye.